Hello, I've just been sitting here planning some routes uh, I'm going to be taking, planning my walks uh, for some new filming that I'm going to be doing um, for this channel. And one of the things I thought was, well, why am I not sharing what I'm doing? Uh, the only difference between what I do and what maybe other hikers do, although I know hiking is very popular on YouTube, is that I kind of, because I'm kind of physically a big, unfit person, uh, I need to plan very carefully that I can actually manage to do a hike and complete it. There's nothing worse than starting filming and then just failing because you're not fit enough to complete it. Um, I'm sure there are wor worse things than that, but <laughs> not for me. Uh, so I wanted to share with you what I do to plan it and plan it carefully. I look at how many hills there are, how the distance that uh, I, I need to travel, um, the fact that I'm carrying a backpack, the fact that I'm filming takes a lot of time. I have to do, uh, I have to get the drone out occasionally and do some high shots and some static shots. So it usually works out that I only do about one mile an hour. Um, so I need to be careful uh, and make sure that I pick carefully. I also like to pick areas where they have something to tell you or something to tell the viewer. I, they've got a history. They've got a story. So I fish around on maps to find somewhere suitable. And I thought I'd share with you the tools that I use. So this is um, a tool called uh, footpath.co.uk. And, and here is another uh, website called viewranger.com. This is my.viewranger.com. These uh, are websites that you can set an account up with. Uh, both of them will synchronize with your tablet or your, uh, your sports watch or your smart watch, I should say. Uh, and when you're walking, your watch will be telling you turn left, turn right, uh, and obviously be keeping track of how many steps you've done, how many miles you've done, and how clever you are. And well done. Who's a clever boy? I'll be doing all that for you and making you, inspiring you to keep going. So these are the two tools I use, but they're slightly different. And I thought I would just share with you uh, one of the main differences. If I start out on View Ranger here, um, well, the first thing I'll do when I want to walk is try and pick an area. I live around here, which is down near a hull. So I want to find an area that's not too far to drive and anywhere within this space is okay with me uh, for a quick bit of filming. So I was thinking, look, I've, I've done up here, I've done a lot of the North York wall, uh, moors. I've done all that area. I've not filmed it, but I've been up there so much. And I just naturally zoomed in on here and I noticed there were these features. Do you see these little scrawly valleys? They're kind of like neat little um, ravines in what is otherwise flat land. So these were really interesting to me. Um, this is the Yorkshire Wolds, uh, and these are, it, it does look like it's folding landscape. It's lovely. Um, so I thought, well, this could be interesting to film. So um, I, I took a look. Now it's here that I realized one thing you can't do on these that I'm aware of, you can't go into Street View. So... In order to do in order to do that, you need to open Google Maps. Ba ba, there it is. Uh, Google Maps. Now, this is really the only reason I use it because Google Maps I find is quite low resolution. When you get really into it, it gets quite pixelated. Um, but I've gone into Google Maps and I've, this area that I found, um, I noticed that these little valleys were all meeting in this one spot. When you look into it, there's nothing there really, bar a farm. Uh, there's a farm and there's a little independent house there. Uh, and there's this little building here, which is St. James's Church. Now, look at the size of it. It's tiny. So I immediately, the reason I use Google Maps is just so I can pop down to Street View and have a run around. It's really quite useful that I can do this. You can sort of click around and just check. And I think, well, there's a good spot to open the video. You know, I'd be sitting on the bench and I could do a little talk a little bit about the church turns out this church is the smallest church in East Yorkshire that's interesting that's a good foundation uh, for it uh, there must be lots of other interesting information around this church uh, where's the community that used to be here there must have been one uh, and what and here's this amazing crossroads there's the tiny little house uh, I've actually found out the person who's lived there is, he's getting on now in his years but he's lived there his entire life and it's literally two rooms uh here's a farm 
Uh, here's a lovely little post, and these are all around these country lanes telling you what direction to go in. And these are just single lanes. So two vehicles can't go down them at the same time. Um, so this just looks like a really nice, you see all the hillsides, the folding hills all around? Just looks <laughs> very Tolkien, to be absolutely honest with you. So this is where I thought I wanted to go. Uh, um, so the next step is really to find out, are there any paths? Can I legally, because you can't just walk where you like. Uh, we're not allowed to do that. That's trespassing. So we need to find legal pathways that have existed through the annals of time that people the public are allowed to use we live in this country the land cannot just be sold off to private owners so that we can't see it anymore so these public pathways exist uh, for us to walk down there's a public pathway which is usually just a little uh, track uh, and then um, there, there are bridleways which are usually double tracks for a horse and cart say or a horse at least um, and there's byways as well but I'm not quite sure what they are uh, so that's that's the deal. So where's where's the nearest path? So for that, uh, I would go to something like View Ranger. Now on View Ranger, I I I use View View Ranger. Now ViewRanger.com is where is the PC or the browser version. There's also the app and there's the watch app. So everything you do on the browser synchronizes to the apps on your tablet and your watch. There's another app I use called uh, foot, footpathmap.co.uk. I think it's just called Footpath, the app. Um, and they're kind of different. They kind of say the same, but they're kind of different. But I'll show you how I use them. And you, by all means, feel free to go into detail on these apps. I can't show you everything they do or the video will be half an hour long. Uh, but they're kind of different. Uh, I'll show you how I use them. And by all means, down in the comments, tell me if I am if I only need one of them. Uh, because I think they kind of do different things. But you can correct me on that. So let me tell you a little bit about um, View Ranger. This is where I actually map out my route because it's got this auto... It's got a function where it will automatically cling on to pathways i found that view ranger tended to have more pathways than pathfootmap.co.uk but again i mean i may be mistaken there so i'm zooming into the little church because that's going to be my starting point and i can't see any pathways at all because i'm looking at a satellite image so what first thing i want to do is change it to uh, an ordinance survey map so i can see the pathways so here's here's the ordinance survey map you zoom in to, you see the dotted line. There we go. I've zoomed right in now. There's the church. That's giving me my starting point. And how it works is, uh, I just need to make sure it's fully reset. You just click once and it creates a waypoint. Uh, if I click again, it creates a straight line between the waypoint you've just created and the, the waypoint you created originally. And in the middle, it puts another square, which you can grab onto and move to, if it bends like that little road does there, you can move it so it's back on the track. As soon as you move it, you'll notice two new boxes appear where you can do exactly the same thing, and it'll go on forever. So uh, I want to undo that. So I've, so the more you create here uh, is is all going to be instructions on your, on your watch. So tr try and be minimalistic with it, and also, you know, you don't want to be spending your whole life clicking around maps. Um, but it does have a, a neat little feature if you're struggling seeing where the actual pathway is. What you can do is set the route generation to automatic, and then when you click, it will kind of lock on to where the path is. I trust it's doing it. Let me just see. There you go. So I've zoomed right out so I can cover more distance. And you can see it's kind of locking in. But you see how it's kind of gone off a little bit there? You see how it's gone off? Now, if you're like really pedantic, you can sort of go in and re-edit it a little bit. Oops. You know, get it back on the track. But you don't really have to do that. You know, there's no hard and fast rules about walking the paths. As I can see, this is going to be nice because I'm walking right along the edge of quite a steep hillside there. So I'm going to go all the way along here to this point. 
Then I'm going to go up to the road. And now I'm on this green diamond. Uh, that's the North York Walls Way. So I'm just going to go down there a little bit. And then oh, I'm going to follow the North York Walls Way down to here. I have to go down to the farm. And I think, yeah. Although, and this happens quite often when you're walking, you have to walk through people's farms, <laughs> which I'm sure they're delighted about. Okay, so it's now done a big jump. So what I do is undo it and then just... Um, I didn't really want to make a tutorial on how to use this app. I just wanted to show you the functionality of it. Well, I can then save that. Um, and then I can go to say root information. I can type in, I can type in the name of it. Call it for dawn. Um, like this. I can choose a picture of the church or whatever if I've recorded it. I can type in some information, and I can just share user friendly information for fellow walkers who want to follow in my footsteps. Um, I can click whether it's dog friendly, wheelchair friendly. Family friendly, 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 fee friendly, toilet friendly. And I can put in some tags here as, as well. So it can be easily searchable by people. And I can then publish that or I can keep it private. Well, I mainly keep them private because I'm a bit embarrassed about my uh, my walks. They're not very long. And then I would save that. And then as soon as I save that, that gets uploaded to my watch. And it goes to the watch and I can click it. Browse it and it'll download them all into the watch, which is fantastic. Now, how um, Footpath differs is this is much more a tool for showing you the lay of the land. So if I kind of like zoom in here, there's Ford, here's Ford in here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna zoom in too much because I want to show you all these layers. So these are paid for sites, by the way. There are free versions, but they're very limited if you get the free version. And it just seems well worth paying for to have these tools that I'm about to show you. So the main thing for me is the layers. So if I click on footpath, bridle, bridleways and byways, bam, it shows you all the footpaths that are available. And if I zoom in to Forden, it shows you the footpath that I've just mapped out. But... um which is fine, but you'll notice it doesn't show you the roads. So it doesn't actually calculate the route, automatically calculate a route for you to take, which I find kind of frustrating. Um, but it is useful nevertheless. Um, it's kind of saying that what I've just picked isn't a footpath, so that's a bit disconcerting. Uh, is there a road there or something? <laughs> I need to check how I get back down onto this road. So that's so. This is what I mean. It's kind of like it doesn't seem to be one hundred percent accurate. But so that aspect of it is fine, but it's not great. But if you zoom out, you can see just how many footpaths there are. All these red lines are places that the public are legally allowed to wander. A little bits in Scotland as well. Scotland is a wilderness. Um. So. The other thing that I really like is it's got these national trails. Now, this blue line that's just come in, that is, if I click it, the North York, uh, North York, Yorkshire Wolds Way. So I can uh, get rid of that, hopefully. How do I get rid of it? Do we? There you go. Got rid of it. Um, uh, it's also got. Uh, Areas that are okay to roam in. So these are like areas of common land. Um, and you click it and it highlights areas. Now this is where I'm planning my walk. So I can see that a lot of these hillsides around here are perfectly, that's a flat area there, are perfectly, um, I can roam anywhere in the yellow legally. Uh, I'm allowed to do it as a member of the public. Uh, that no, no land over owner can come along and stop me doing that. That's just what uh, free to roam or right to roam means. Um, that there could still be rules about what you about what you can and can't do about camping, etc. But I think that if you're well behaved and it doesn't become like a national craze, nobody's going to bat an eyelid if you get your metal detector out or pop a little tent up for at six o'clock in the evening and you're gone by five the next morning. So uh, these are great little areas to spot. And if I zoom out, you can see that. Um, this is the North York Moors. There's lots of areas where um, 
you can go and roam around and go where you like. Um, nobody's going to stop you. Um, as I say, camping is uh, it's illegal to wild camp in the UK. Uh, so, uh, but people are pretty well behaved. It's quite like a specialist thing that people do. Um, and the culture of camping wild is to respect the countryside. So people tend to t- kind of turn a blind eye to it to a certain extent. But if everybody started littering and it became a problem, they would start being a little bit more firmer about who can and can't. A lot of the, 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 the hot spots where tourists go, uh, if there's tents appearing all the time, then they're going to step it up and say, nah, nah. Um, so that's what it does. It's got sort of, it, it maps out or shows you um, where you can roam. You can click that off. Here's the cycle network, and it's and that's kind of like a light blue. And you can see where people can cycle. And it will, it's kind of, yeah. It's, I'm not, it's just showing me main roads, really. So I'm not hugely... Uh, crazy about it but i think you can go deeper into the settings uh to tell it what sort of cycle roads you like uh, and then i'll just show you them and then of course it's got points of interest i zoom out here and you can find national trust monuments there you go you can go and, if you're a member of the national trust that's quite a useful tool to have um, definitely good if you're making videos because um, although you probably need permission to go and film these locations, you could probably talk about them and show them from a distance uh, perfectly legally outside of their um, jurisdiction. And then you've got national heritage sites. And then what else have you got? You've got country parks here, which is fantastic. Um yeah, then you've got different types of maps. Now, one of the maps that I really like, and if I go down into where I was, if I can find it. It's down here, wasn't it? There it is. If I go down into Fordham, there's this 1900s historical map. So this is great. So I've got a map here from the 1900s, which is showing me the farm was still there. Uh, it doesn't have the little house there. So the house was, I think, probably built in the 60s. Somebody acquired a little pocket of land and built a house. Uh, but the church is still very much there, St. James's Church. And I just think this is, like, hugely interesting. And I'll tell you why in particular. I was looking through all these trees area. Where, where, where is it now? There's this little areas where you find, oh, there's a well here somewhere. There's a well pump there. What's this tumulus? You find that you find there's little uh, features that used to be active and used by people in the past that are now overgrown and gone. And if you're somebody like me who has a definite interest in uh, metal detecting, these are interesting little features to know about. What is that? So you can you can uh, there's chalk pit there. Look, there's a little chalk pit. I bet that's overgrown. I bet in fact I can click if I go to satellite view. Yeah, it's a field. So somewhere under this field, there used to be a chalk pit. So although I would never do it because it's a private land, I could get my metal detector around, do a little scurry around there because there's been in the past human activity around this spot. So I might find something. <sighs> I love a bit of treasure hunting. And then, then you've got the, the open street map. I don't know what that does. I'm not, I'm not really aware of the benefits of open street maps. not something that I use. Ordnance survey map which we're used to. Um, now, all, the, all these maps, not all these maps are immediately available to any, everybody and anybody. So um, do be prepared that to fully use the benefit of these tools. You might have to pay, I'm not sure, anything up to 20, 30 pounds a year. So it's not cheap necessarily, but um, if your hobby is walking and getting out and about, as mine is, then it's a worth, worthwhile investment in terms of your safety, keeping it legal, and also just uh, really maximizing the benefit, research, being able to research where it is you're going to be going. Well, I hope you found that interesting, if not interesting, uh, reasonably useful. Um, thanks very much for watching. I'll put links to View Ranger and uh, footpath.co.map .co.uk down in the description. Um, please do uh, hit the subscribe and uh, like the video. That counts a lot for YouTube. And uh, hopefully you'll come back again and watch some more of my videos. I've, uh, I'm have i uploading material to um, 
Amazon Prime. I've got a documentary series on there now of my walks. Um, my walks are kind of slightly different in that I'm an amateur and it's a bit of a voyage of discovery for me and I do tend to ramble on about any old stuff while I while I do the walk. So hopefully you find them entertaining, a little bit informative um, and fun. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time, please do take care and I'll see you then.